help us understand what this technology means, how advanced it is. You know, it becomes obvious at some point it's from somewhere else we didn't make it because we're taking it apart to figure out how it works. Look, a machine that makes gravity is the most important thing that mankind could probably create. Look, we have electromagnets that make magnetic fields. You know, we can make electric fields we, you know, with Van de Graaff generators and, you know, God knows what else. But, you know, to make a gravitational field is like the, the, the last piece of a missing pie because when you can, right now the only thing that makes gravity, as far as we know, is mass. You just need a bunch of stuff and it's a property of mass that it just magically pulls in things. You know, we observe gravity, we see what it does, but we really don't know what it, what it is. We can throw some equations together and say, well, it works like this, but we really don't know what's behind it. But if you can make a machine that on demand makes gravity, you know, all the stuff we write science fiction about, stops becoming science fiction that afternoon. Then force fields become a reality. You can shift time. I mean, everything becomes possible. It's, uh, it's, it's the most important thing. And here is an operating machine sitting in front of us that makes gravity. And do we really want to be able to make one of those things? I mean, you could make impenetrable fields. You can do have propulsion that uh, is mind-boggling as the crafts operate. It would be the ultimate weapon. Well, not, it, not just the ultimate weapon, but it would really be the ultimate thing. It would, it would catapult mankind forward. And what really sucks is the military is in control of this. <laughs> I should do uh, yeah. it. I neglected to mention this during my presentation, but Bob and I have talked about it before, a guy named Ben Rich, who uh, Jim Goodall knows and, and interviewed several times. Ben Rich was the head of the Skunk Works, which uh, was the, they operated things at, at Groom Lake and, uh, and had been there. They developed the U-2 and SR-71 and Stealth. If anybody would know about advanced technology, it's him and Kelly Johnson. So um, a lot of people have speculated whether Ben Rich uh, and those guys had incorporated alien technology into some of the advanced airframes that we've got. And I even had a chance to ask him on the day that the stealth was unveiled out there at Nellis whether any alien stuff was in there. He said no. But other people have talked to him. Jan Harzan, who's here from MUFON, heard a speech that Ben Rich gave at UCLA in which he basically said, we now have the technology to take ET home. We had the calculations slightly wrong, but we can do anything you can imagine. We can travel to the stars. But, he said, the technology is locked up in black, bu black budgets and black programs and will never see the light of day. What do you think about that? Well, that's sort of like the same thing you're saying. Yeah, that sounds exactly like what I'm saying. You know, I hope that's not the case, but I mean, how do you pry it out of there? It's, it's, it really, there should be a lot more people working on this. We just had a report to what was going on, so it's not like you can ever say, you know, we really don't know. We've been working on this two weeks. You better come up with something. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, look, we think it's, a, we think it's an accelerator, and, you know, we, we, we've identified that that's, you know, 114, 115, 116. It looks like it's 115. It's an element. And you have to explain this stuff to guys that absolutely have minimal scientific background and just try that when you're dealing with stuff that's not even, you know, from the earth. So how does it work? I mean, uh, how does it work? Um, what you learn, you, you get a piece of it, uh, a triangle, it's in the, and, and how does it, what, it function? Really, you just put the, uh, I, I wish I had that model that, uh, it's in my car. Show me. Is it really? <laughs> okay. Um, you, you, you just put the, the fuel in there. You, there's a, there's a little cap that sits on top. And then as soon as you put, yet nothing happens, but as soon as you put the lid on, it turns on. There's no on switch. Yeah, it's just, it, it's like it attains resonance or something. It just is on. Which makes you wonder, how does it work in the craft? Because no one's taken the lid off, because in the craft, it sits on the ground and there's a conduit that sits over it and goes to the top of the craft. So, but it's not clear how anything works in the craft. And it generates gravity. Oh yeah. Creates. Yeah, it generates its own gra artificial gravitational field and that lifts the craft off the ground. It, we've had conversations uh, in private about how this accounts for 
some UFO cases. I mean, it, it in, in effect achieves invisibility in a sense. You could be saying right oh, now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because light, it, it will bend it around there. And it, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't leave that. <laughs> I left out that pretty important observation. When the craft was up, I mean, you could walk underneath and look straight up and you can't see the craft until you step to the side and it becomes visible again. It's quite, it's quite amazing, you know? So it, it bent, well, it bends, it bends light just like, uh, you know, you could see on a, a hot roadway in the summertime how, how heat would affect that coming off of, uh, you know, but here you're, it, it, you're in a much more controlled situation and the, way, the shape of the gravitational field, the artificial field around the craft, if you look at that and then we're able to stand at different vantage points, you can just look around it. Now, this isn't something new. We know this from, you know, looking at faraway stars, uh, they, they call it gravitational lensing, where a star might be over here, but because we're looking around another star, it bends light and, you know, but here again, here is an artificial source, a machine that does this, and that's everything. But yeah, all, like I said, all the science fiction things become reality. There's your invisibility cloak, there's your, you know, impenetrable force field, here's your field propulsion system and you know here's you're even beginning to tamper with you know potential time travel it occurs to you hey this could work not only in space but underwater maybe that's why the navy's interested in running the program i mean that it's odd isn't it that it's the u.s navy running the program out there you know that never occurred to me <laughs> no i never i swear to this i never even thought about that thing operating underwater it I would wonder work how just fine though wouldn't it i guess i i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I mean, yeah, I don't understand why I wouldn't, but um, it'd be interesting to see what the water does. You had said, I remember, it, 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 I could barely get my pointy little head around it when we were first talking about this, but that uh, if somebody had one of these and were out in space and wanted to come to Earth, in essence, they're not propelling themselves toward Earth. It works differently, right? They're yeah, yeah. In fact, the two modes that the uh, craft operated on are... Um, yeah, they label delta and omicron configuration. Delta meaning using all three uh, uh, amplifiers and omicron obviously meaning just one. And the way the craft would work is, um, get rid of my reactor here. Now I'm gonna draw a really bad flying saucer. So normally the, um, you would have the three amplifiers hanging, or the, the three emitters hanging down in Omicron mode. A single one would sling, swing sideways and you would have the other two sitting like that. Now, what happens is the two that are facing straight down essentially act like a pedestal where they just keep the craft steady. The one swung out to the side um, creates a gravitational distortion off the edge. And these th in, in Omicron configuration, these things really fly unstable. They're, they do not look like uh, any, any sort of high tech. Uh, technology. It, uh, to give you an example, if you put a bowling ball in the middle of your bed and two feet away you take your fist and you push it down, the bowling ball rolls towards it. And that's exactly how the craft operates. It focuses the, the single emitter and creates a gravity distortion, essentially a divot in space-time and the craft rolls forward, you know, in the distortion. So that's basically how the thing moves around so, and this is opposed to our conventional uh, propulsion, whether you're using uh, you know, a jet, a rocket, a propeller, we always take something and accelerate it out the back using the action reaction principle and you know, push forward. And these guys are doing it exactly opposite. They're creating a distortion in front and you know, sucking towards it.